Samsung and Huawei made waves across the tech world a few months ago when both companies announced their upcoming folding smartphones. Employing cutting edge, long promised, but still rarely implemented bending screen technology, both the Samsung Fold and the Mate X envisioned a sort of transforming experience, a phone that at a moment's notice folds out to expand the screen real estate to nearly double. As an iPad early adopter, I don't have to tell you that I took this concept immediately. A phone that turns into a tablet? Sign me right up! Sadly, despite the promise, real world usability proved to be the folding phone's undoing. Both the Mate X and the Fold suffered delays with the latter's well-documented structural failures in the hand of YouTube tech reviewers putting a serious dent on the very concept of the phone-tablet hybrid. If not Samsung as a whole, really, this is a company that, don't forget, had a bit of an exploding phone problem not that long ago. I spoke highly of the folding phone concept here on my channel when the Fold and the Mate X were doing the rounds, but even my own enthusiasm for the idea waned a bit when these devices proved to be just too fragile for the hands of even seasoned tech experts. Huawei infamously wouldn't even let outsiders handle the Mate X during its first unveiling, which combined with the apparent frailty of the Samsung Fold reinforced the idea that bending phones are hilariously unreliable technology meant more for headlines than actual day-to-day -day use. Meanwhile, I turn my attention to another kind of folding phone. This is the ZTE Atom M, a handset released two years ago that tried a different approach at the whole phone that can turn into a tablet thing. Largely ignored at launch due to the $700 price tag that didn't quite match the slightly underwhelming internals, the Axon M is making a bit of a comeback due to a drastic price cut that makes it an interesting tech oddity almost impossible to resist for huge nerds who make a living talking about tech on YouTube anyway. Now the question is, is the Axon M worth it? For me personally, yes, but let's dive a bit deeper to figure out if it's worth it for you. All right, I was seriously going to go with an unfold pun at that part. I even wrote it on the script and everything, but I figured you guys are listening to me blab about a cell phone for 10 minutes. You've suffered enough. Let's get on with the review. All right, so this right here is the ZTE Axon M. And as you can see, the first thing you can notice is that I actually bothered to put a little screen protecting uh, skin or shield or whatever you guys call these on the Axon M. Now, I normally don't use that on any of my phones. I'm careful enough that I'm confident that I'm not gonna scratch or break the screen or anything like this, but on this phone, on the Axon M, because the screen is really the reason why you're buying something like this, which by the way, I bought this out of my own pocket. This was not sent to me for a review or anything like that. I mean, it is a two year old phone, so I guess it goes without saying. I said it anyway. I actually bought this out of my own pocket because I thought that there's a lot of potential in this idea of a phone that basically unfolds to double the size of the screen. Now, let's take a look at the device here. So it is a little bit chunkier than you might be used to in phones. And it's not that much heavier, but you can definitely tell. Now, I've been using it for a few weeks now and I'm used to this, but I remember when I first picked it up, it's definitely heavier than my iPhone 10 and most other phones that I've used recently. So there's that. I have the ROG phone two here and which is, you know, a beast of a phone and it, it, they're about the same weight, I think. So it's, it's a, it's a chunky boy, let's say. On the side here, you have the SIM card tray, which also doubles as the micro SD tray. It only has 64 megs of internal storage, but it can be expanded up to 256 gigs. If I'm not mistaken, did I say 64 megabytes? <laughs> it only has 64 megs of internal storage. It only comes with 64 gigs of internal storage, but it can be expanded up to, if I'm not mistaken, 256 gigs by putting a micro SD card in here. Right below that, we have the volume rocker. Right here, we have the on off switch, which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. And right here, we have this custom button, which you can change what it does, basically out of the box, if you press twice, I believe, it goes into the camera application and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the camera. And then if you press and hold, you can change what it does. I have it here that if, if I press and hold, it goes into my comic book reader. Let me bring down the brightness a little bit 
so you can actually see what I'm showing you. So here we go. So at the bottom here, we have the speakers. They're quite loud, reasonably loud. And we have the USB-C charger here. On the side here, we have that hinge, which, you know, it's very noticeable. It's there, you can't miss it. And on the top, you have the headphone jack and the little microphone. Now, about that hinge, it is on the right-hand side. And if you're right-handed like me, you have probably gotten used to over the years of accessing the buttons on your phone on the right hand side with your right thumb, right? That's what's natural with most phones. Uh, I might wager a guess pretty much every phone, right? This is the other way around. Now this creates a problem because muscle memory is going to kick in when you pull this thing out of your pocket. And if you touch it like this with the buttons on this side, invariably you're going to pick it up like this and be pressing buttons here trying to wake the screen on and you know it's on the other side here now that's you know a minor problem but, but it is an issue let's talk specs so you're looking at a 1080 by 1920 screen it's a 5.2 incher here and it's very clearly a 2017 phone you got that big bezel on the top that big bezel on the bottom here these were standard back then but you know after years of using something like an iPhone 10, it feels pretty old. If I were to come to the Axon M from say an iPhone 8 Plus, this probably wouldn't be as noticeable, but you know, what are you gonna do? The Axon M also only has one camera. That's a 20 megapixel shooter here on the front. There's no camera in the back. Now, this is not that big an issue because they figured out a way around that. Basically, what am I pressing here? Basically, when you bring up the camera application, the phone is going to instruct you to turn it around. So this is what you'd have. You're gonna be pointing the front of the phone towards the subject of the picture, and in the back here, you have the viewfinder. That's, you know, how it's gonna work. If you wanna take a selfie instead, you just hit the button there. It's gonna tell you again to turn the phone, and now you're in selfie mode, looking at the front of the phone facing the camera again. So. When you're talking about taking pictures, there's gonna be a lot of, you know, flipping back and forth, depending on the camera that you wanna use. And the camera is really nothing to write home about, despite having 20 megapixels. We know megapixels aren't the whole story. There's a lot more to picture quality than just the number of megapixels. So it's an okay Android camera, basically. It has a Snapdragon 821 processor. So again, a bunch of 2017 specs. Don't expect to be blown away by this. And it has a 3,180 million hour battery which actually performed better than I expected in my use considering how much I was using the second screen now about that second screen this is what you do you just open it like this there is that very satisfying click and after about a second or so the second screen comes on now there's several different ways to interact with the second screen and you change the mode you're using by pressing this M button on the bottom here so the first mode that uh, when you first pick up the phone, it's gonna be set to this one here, where it turns off this, this screen entirely and just uses the primary screen. You can go to duplicate what you're seeing on the primary screen on the secondary, which I don't really see a lot of use for this. One use case that they uh, mention is putting your phone at kind of a tent-like position here. And then if you bring up a video or a presentation or something like that, for instance, this is my uh, vlogging channel, right? It's in Portuguese. So if I boot up one of my videos here, as you can see, let me skip ahead a bit. So there's, there's a vlogging channel. If I am gonna expand the screen like this, and then that way two people can watch the video at the same time or a presentation or something like that. I don't really see the point in doing this, but it's something that you can do, I suppose. I don't, like, I've been using this for quite a while. I haven't used this once, so, but it's there. This is probably the least useful way to use the two screens here. So the other thing you can have it set to is, it's to expand the app to use both screens. So in this case here, I have the video here on the top and information on the video at the bottom, like the comments and things like that. This is kind of cool. I can also expand the video to the entire screen, but because of the nature of that gap in the middle there, this is probably not great. I don't see myself ever watching videos like that. You don't gain that much more screen real estate than just you know, doing this and watching the video this way, in my opinion. So that's also not something, I don't see anybody using this that much. The other way you can use this, and this is where it starts to get interesting, is to have two different apps, each running 
on either screen. So in this case, I have the video going on the primary screen here, and then I can have, say, Chrome on the secondary screen. So I have information on the axon here on Chrome. I can have, let's go back here. I can go into my social media, for instance. I can go into, for some reason I don't see Instagram here. Am I going blind? I'm on a, oh, there it is. It's in alphabetical order, what's wrong with me? Anyway, so I can boot up Instagram here, for instance, and there's my Instagram page. So I can be watching a video and I can be, you know, checking the comments by scrolling down here. And I can also be either browsing my Instagram or posting new pictures, reading my comments there, checking DMs and doing all sorts of things. I can also, write, say, the script for this very video while having the GSM Arena page open here on the other screen, which is something that I actually did while I was at Walmart buying groceries. I can't brag about much, but I will say this, my multitask game is out of this world. Oh, here's something I completely forgot to mention when I shot this video. Provided you have screen protectors on, the secondary screen serves as a pretty handy kickstand for watching videos, actually. I found myself using this far more than I anticipated when I bought the Axon M. So that's basically the four different ways you can have the screen set up. You can duplicate what you're seeing on the primary screen onto the secondary screen. You can have it one big screen like this. You can have two different apps showing up on either screen and you can just turn off the secondary screen altogether. This is basically the different uses you can have for it. What I find myself doing the most with this phone, in fact, is the very idea of why I bought this phone, is reading comic books. I have an app here, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you here what I mean. I was reading The Ultimates, but I also have Civil War here. So I have a little small collection of comics here. Uh, the SD card that I put in here, just comic books, basically. So if I load up a comic book here, and by the way, I forget the name of this app. This app is called Comic Screen. It's the only app that I could find that would allow me to view the comics vertically like this. I'll, 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 I'll explain what I mean. Let me bring up here. So there's a Wolverine Civil War comic. By the way, I bought all the comics legally, so don't lose your mind. Anyway, so I have Wolverine here, right? So as you can see, basically in this orientation, the gap stays right in the middle here, horizontally. And I find that this way I can have it not cut into the speech bubbles as much. Most other comic book reading apps only allow you to orient the screen like this, right? To have it fit uh, width-wise, so you're not having to zoom in and all these things. You just have to scroll up and down, right? So when it's right in the middle like this, you'll see what I mean. Like in this case here, it's not happening so much, but you see here, right here, it cuts right into the speech bubble. It makes it so in some instances, it's pretty, it's pretty bad reading it like this, right? So with this app, I can have it like this and I can just scroll up and down as needed as I'm reading through the comic. And then like say in this, this portion right here, right? I can just position this right about here. So I can read the top here. And then when I get to the bottom here, I kind of position it right here, read the bottom and then scroll a little bit more, read the last panel. And you know, like this, see? So same deal here, read the top, read the bottom here, scroll a bit. So it works, it's, it's much more legible. Like I said, other apps will allow you to have it like this, but they have the comic zoomed in in a weird way. Like I can't have it touch the sides of the screen when it's in this vertical orientation. So I ended up settling for this and I tried every comic book app you can think of. This one is the good one. Speaking of reading, this is not just good for comics. You can also read regular books in this this app right here. Let me show you a little bit closer. This app's called eBooks with an X, and it's the one app that I found that actually treats both screens as, as two different display elements. And by that, I mean it splits the text into two columns so you can read it like this. Most other apps that I tried will have the text display across both. So this is a better way of reading. So, and if, if I have more time and I want to read a little bit more comfortably, I can open the screen, but if not, I can just close it like so, and then I'm reading it normally, like I would read on any regular phone. Oh my God, what have I done here? If you got a little bit more time, a little bit more space, and you want to read a little bit more comfortably, you can just boom there. Oh, did I turn it off? I think, no, there we go. Let me flip that there. Now the text is showing as two distinct columns. So this right here is pretty cool. I found myself reading a lot more, both regular books and comic books in the last few weeks that I've had this phone. I'm liking it quite a bit. You can also game, of course, 
but you know you're gonna have that line cutting across your game it's not great for most games i have stardew valley here that i can show you stardew valley is one of my favorite games of all time this is not my favorite way of playing it obviously so as you can see you got that uh, that gap right in the middle because i have these uh screen shields here protecting my screens it, it, it makes it so it's even a little bit more noticeable but uh it's playable you can play it like that i just really wouldn't recommend it is all one thing that's kind of cool game wise is that you can turn on that mode where you have two distinct apps and then say on the primary screen you're going to open up say scum vm which is an emulator for old point and click adventure games that i used to play so much when i was a kid on the secondary screen here while that loads you can search say you can have on the top here the walkthrough for the game and then you can have the actual game running on the bottom here so i'm gonna load up my save states let's see here load and let's load right here so i got the game running on the bottom here and then i have the actual walkthrough on the top that's kind of interesting I feel like this is a similar experience to what I'm used to on my main computer where I can have content on one screen and then text on the other. It makes it so you're a lot more efficient. One thing that people ask me a lot about, uh, let me, let's make it one big screen again. One thing that people ask me constantly when I posted the first pictures of the Axon M is DS emulation because the dual screen setup, this can emulate DS games far better than most other devices. Now, of course, you are talking about playing games with touch controls, which isn't ideal for most games. For slow-paced RPGs or strategy games, it works surprisingly well. So for instance, let's see here, I had a Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow going last time I, uh, I tried this. So you have your... Uh, let me try to get in the center screen here. So yeah, Castlevania being, you know, an action game is probably not the best candidate for this kind of control scheme. But uh, let me show you here. I'm probably going to die pretty soon here. I don't have much more life left. Something like, okay, something like, say, let me change the game here. Pokemon Heart Gold, on the other hand, uh, would work far better on this kind of a setup. All right, so as you can see, for something like a slow-paced turn-based RPG, this works as, you know, I'm sure you guys have tried running these types of games on touch screens on your phones and stuff like that. This is a great setup. This is a great way to play a game like this. Like DS games that are not based on quick reflexes and things like that. Come on. See, this is why I never beat Pokemon. They talk way too much. All right, you get the idea. So this is the Axon M. It's a pretty cool device. It's different than most things you've probably used before. And it excels at reading both comic books, regular books, and some DS games. It goes for $150 right now. I'm gonna leave the links in the description if you wanna check it out. For that price, like I said, I find it pretty much irresistible. I want to give a big shout out to Alex of Red Skull Productions. He actually did a video on the Axon M, which is the reason why I found out that there was such a big price cut. I actually knew about the Axon M from way back when it first came out, but I had no idea it had gone through such a drastic price cut. So thank you, Alex, so much. In fact, I saw Alex's video and I bought it right away. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the bell so that you don't miss any any future videos follow me on social media both twitter and instagram i'm super active on both and in fact if you follow me there you already knew a lot about this phone because i post so many behind the scenes photos and stuff like that if you're into that maybe you'll enjoy it but that's all the time i have for today i'm izzy and i'm done